Well, happy Pentecost. I love Pentecost. I love the Holy Spirit. But today I'm going to focus on the words of Jesus, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. Right? He's, as he sent his apostles, he sends you and I. Now, this being sent, you know, in an ordinary sense, can produce a variety of emotions, right? It takes something as, as simple and ordinary as going for groceries, being sent to the store. About seven weeks ago, that started producing a variety of emotional reactions in people, right? As we began this whole lockdown and COVID was new to us and all that. And so for, so for some people, going to the store produced fear. They were afraid of contracting the virus by going to the store, so they just didn't want to go. For others, were hesitant to be sent because of the unknowns. It's like, well, where do I have to line up? Do I, do I have to wear a mask and gloves? Can I touch anything in the store? Uh, do I bring my own bags? You know, that kind of thing. And for some, it, it produced excitement. Send me, right? Pick me. I want to go to the store. I just want to get out of the house. I want to do something normal here for a bit. So Jesus' words, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. I want to reflect on what kind of emotional reaction does that produce in us? Because what we're talking about here, Jesus sending us to evangelize the world, to proclaim the good news to all the earth, or to, as we heard in our gospel last week, Jesus' final instructions to his disciples before ascending, he says, Go and make disciples of all the nations. Or as Father Brian has simplified it uh, so nicely for us, is to, to be sent is to go and double your bubble for Jesus. Right? The, we can understand evangelization in those very simple terms, that Jesus desires to bubble with every single person in a, in a personal, intimate way, and so he sends us, right? It's our job to go out in his name and invite people to bubble with uh, Jesus. Now, so what kind of emotional reaction does that uh, stir up in you? Perhaps it, it stirs up uh, a fear, right? It's like, Jesus, I, I don't want to go, right? Send one of those people who is excited about evangelization and, and being sent out. Or, or it might produce hesitation, right? I, I, I don't know how to do this. Uh, Jesus, I, 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 I don't want to go out. I don't know. You know, I'm not qualified, right? Uh, Jesus, send that guy right there, Alex Craven, right? That guy, that Alex Craven guy, he taught a whole series on the joy of the gospel during Lent, right? Send him. He knows what he's talking about. He, did you see? He, he got through all those names in the first reading with no problem, right? He, he knows. He knows this stuff. And, and heck, he's even wearing red today. So send him. Or, or, or send that guy over there, Father Brian, right? Father Brian knows our parish vision and mission statement backwards and forwards. He even dreams about that stuff, and he, he really knows what he's talking about. Or, or, or send Father Eve. Actually, nobody knows what Father Eve's talking about, so don't send him, right? Um, no, just, just kidding. We're, we're all sent by Jesus, but not on our own, right? Uh, the parish is here to help us. It, the parish, as Father Brian explained and gave us examples like last week, the parish is here to equip us in this, in our mission, right? It, it's, and it's even written in our parish mission statement. How did the Father send a Jesus? Well, I could come up with a lot of answers for that, but I want to focus on one commentary that points us to the baptism of Jesus. And I really like this uh, image because it's something that's familiar to us but also, it, I think it really ties in well with what we've been saying about the Holy Spirit over the last few weeks. You know, cooperating and receiving and welcoming the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to read to you from a Luke's account of Jesus' baptism and offer a few comments. 
So this is from Luke uh, 3. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. So that voice from heaven, the voice of the Father, affirming Jesus in his relationship, you know, affirming and rooting Jesus in his identity as a beloved uh, son. You and I are sent by Jesus because we too are beloved sons and daughters of God. And the Holy Spirit descended upon Jesus. Same for us at our baptism. The next line in Luke's Gospel reads, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. Jesus was led by the Spirit. That relates to the image we've been using of the, the Holy Spirit as our GPS leading us, right? But just as we've said with the GPS, it's only effective if we pay attention to it and, and follow its directions so too with the Holy Spirit. We, we need to trust in the Holy Spirit. We need to follow his lead. He's leading us into a mission, and we, so we want to cooperate with him in our mission. A few lines later in Luke's Gospel, it says, Then Jesus, filled with the power of the, of the Spirit, returned to Galilee. And so this is when Jesus begins his public ministry that the Father had sent him to do. So the Father does not send Jesus on his own. The Father sends Jesus full of the Holy Spirit, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus does not send you and I alone. He sends us in the power of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we see this in our gospel today. Jesus' words, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> he breathed on them, right? The, the breath of God, the Spirit of God going forth uh, onto the disciples, going with the disciples, empowering them. Uh, think of that wind of Pentecost, right? The, the active power of the Holy Spirit empowering uh, the disciples to go forward. So when did you and I receive our mission? When did Jesus send us? Well, I could ask that a, a different way and ask you, well, when did you receive the Holy Spirit? Well, baptism, right? Uh, it, so if Pope Francis makes this point just so, so clear when he writes, in virtue of their baptism, all the members of the people of God have become missionary disciples. So there's no question you and I are on mission, that we've been sent by Jesus. But the question for us today is, have I accepted that mission? Right? Have I intentionally chosen to say, yes, Jesus, send me. And, and the kicker is, if until we do that, until we say, yes, Jesus, send me, we can't really expect to cooperate with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit has been a gift to us by Jesus, sent to us to empower us on mission. The Holy Spirit is that active agent uh, leading us into mission, and we cooperate with him there in a particular way. Well, this, this feast of a Pentecost, that we, we refer to it as the birthday of the church because it's when the church goes public, right? It goes forth. It, it, it's the inauguration of the public ministry of the church in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we find these disciples that were afraid, they were huddled together in an upper room, uh, you know, they, they weren't qualified. They were hesitant to leave the, the room to go out. And all of a sudden, they get excited. They become explosively alive in the Holy Spirit, and they begin to go out and 
and proclaim the message of the good news, they begin to transform the world. Later it says that 3,000 people uh, responded to their message, right? So 3,000 people chose that day, that afternoon, to bubble with Jesus. Extraordinary. It's so amazing. Um, The effects of Pentecost. Well, I don't know if you recognize uh, the language that I've just used, but we find it in our parish vision statement. So it's rooted in Pentecost, explosively alive in the Holy Spirit, strengthened in community, transforming the world for Jesus. Pentecost, that amazing event, was when the Holy Spirit was poured out in its fullness upon the disciples. When did you and I receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit? Confirmation, right? Confirmation completes baptism. Confirmation is the strengthening and deepening of the grace of the Holy Spirit in us. It's the the, uh, stirring up of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but I don't remember a whole lot about my confirmation, but what I do remember didn't look anything like Pentecost, right? And I don't even remember preparing in a way that to receive, to uh, welcome, to uh, cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Maybe you did, but I certainly didn't. But at the confirmation, you and I received the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to offer a little qualification here. This is where I say we're unlike Jesus. Jesus perfectly received the Holy Spirit, perfectly was filled and empowered and united to the Holy Spirit. You and I, not so perfect. In fact, as somebody put it, we leak, right? So we need to be filled up again and again with the Holy Spirit. That again and again we need to receive him Again and again, we need to try to welcome him into our lives. That Again and again, we, we ask that our, the gifts of our confirmation be stirred up to a greater fullness in us. And, and the good news is Jesus doesn't get tired of sending his Holy Spirit. It's his, his favorite gift to give us. And the Holy Spirit doesn't get tired of coming to us again and again and bringing his gifts to empower us to to equip us on on, on our our mission, right? Uh, But none of us has all the gifts. So we are on mission together. And again, I think Father Brian explained that well last week, you know, that the parish is here to help us with that, to equip us as a body with the gifts that St. Paul mentions in our, our second reading today. So again, the Holy Spirit is that, active agent uh, to, for our mission. So it's difficult to expect to be able to cooperate with the Holy Spirit until we've said, yes, Jesus, send me. I want to take a moment now to uh, bring to the Holy Spirit our emotional reactions to this being sent by a Jesus. So I'm going to invite you to participate in a little exercise here in a moment, something that you can use on your own, um, uh, because we need help. We need help every day. We need to receive more of the Holy Spirit every day in our lives. So just as, you know, the physical body, we need to breathe in uh, wind, you know, like fresh air, oxygen. Uh, We also need to breathe out, to exhale, right, uh, to make room for that fresh air to uh, come in. So in, in a similar way, with the Holy Spirit to breathe in, to receive, to welcome him, we need to breathe out. We need to exhale to make room. You know, we need to exhale those, those things that might be interfering uh, with us uh, cooperating with, his, uh, with him. So I invite you to um, close your eyes and just kind of try to enter into a prayerful or reflective state at this moment. And I'm going to use a few examples from what I've been speaking about today. But again, you can use this exercise uh, with whatever's going on in your life on, on a daily basis. 
So just, it goes something like this, you know, so we begin by exhaling. So, so for example, we want to exhale and, Holy Spirit, I'm afraid. Holy Spirit, I don't want to say yes. I don't want to be sent. Now breathe in. Holy Spirit, bring me your peace. Holy Spirit, help me to say yes to Jesus. We might exhale, Holy Spirit, my faith is weak. I'm full of doubts. Breathe in. Holy Spirit, increase my faith. Exhale. Holy Spirit, I'm so hesitant to step out of my comfort zone. Breathe in. Holy Spirit, I need more courage. Exhale. Holy Spirit, I find it so difficult to follow your lead and cooperate with you. Breathe in. Holy Spirit, teach me how to receive more of you. Holy Spirit, teach me to welcome you more fully. Exhale. Holy Spirit, I want to be sent by Jesus, but I am so weak. Breathe in. Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, fill me. Holy Spirit, empower me as on the day of Pentecost. 